So I'm gonna close this back out. Let's say, let's leave, save this for later, and let's do what we gotta do, adding those two, and then we'll be back. I'll be back. So we'll go down to the accounting on the left. Let's go into our chart of accounts, close up the ham buggy, and then we'll go into the check register to add them. So now I'm just gonna add these in here. I'm just gonna go, okay, let's do this drop down. Let's make it an expense type of item. I'm gonna make them both as of the end of the month. So I'm gonna say 022823. And one was a draw. So I'm gonna say owner draw. And let's, cause this is the, the vendor owner. I'm gonna say this was a draw and 150. That was the amount last time it's trying to memorize. But this time it should be 500. 500 so let's make it 500 and last time we went to, to miscellaneous so remember kind of the issue we have with pulling money out if money comes out of the business if you pull cash out of the business whether you're doing your own bookkeeping or especially if someone else is doing your bookkeeping then you typically want that to be the case because you're taking it out of your business for yourself for your draws so i can see that and see it as a draw because if you're taking money out and then spending it on stuff that's for the business, then we have no audit trail for it. And if it's a legitimate business expense, we want an audit trail, which is easy to do these days by simply paying with anything but cash, right? You want to pay cash for the stuff that we don't want an audit trail for, like your personal you know, business. We don't really need an audit trail for that, right? So you pull the money out and then you go to Disneyland or whatever you're going to do with it. But if it's going to be pulled out for cash or if it's an expense for the business we would like to have an audit trail and you can think taxes for that for example if you got audited you'd like to be able to say hey look i have an electronic transfer that i paid for something that's business related right there rather than having to go through a bunch of receipts to verify uh, cash type of transactions that's the general idea so that's what we'll do last this time now if if you however are pulling money out for business transactions and sometimes that might be a legitimate thing because you might say, well, cash goes further for certain transactions. If I'm tipping someone or something like that, I'd rather give them cash so that they could, maybe that'll go a little bit further for them on their side or whatever. But the general rule is we'd like to have the audit trail. So when they pull the money out, if I could say it's a, it's a draw, remember the difference. If they pull money out and we record it as an expense, it's going to be on the income statement, lowering net income, which is typically good for taxes. But if you've got a whole bunch of stuff in like miscellaneous expense, for example, the IRS might get suspicious. Think of that as a red flag and question you about it possibly, right? And if you put it on the books as on the balance sheet as a draw, it's going to, as we'll do this time, it'll show up down here. will not hit the income statement because you are now the owner. Basically, this is like a kind of like a liability account to you, the owner, and you're pulling the money out for yourself. Now, if it's a corporation, then you, you can have dividends and the dividends have to be agreed upon by the board and so on and the management in order to distribute the dividends because they all have to be the same. But if you're a partnership or you're a sole proprietorship, then you might have more leeway in terms of the agreement with a partnership or obviously if it's a sole proprietorship, you have the leeway to take the money out in the form of the draw. Okay, so that's what we're going to do here. We're going to call it a draw. So I want to make an, an, another account here or see if they have a draws account. Let's see draws so here we have one owner draws so they gave one for us it's an equity account that's the key so if you set one up yourself if you need to set one up it's going to be an equity type of account i'm going to say okay what's this going to do decrease the checking account the other side is going to go into the equity for draws I'm going to record it save it let's check it out real quick balance sheet run it we're now in february february and if i scroll down we had the draw of the 500 hundo, the 500, and then the other side is down here in the equity section in draws. It's a contra equity or a negative equity, reducing equity. Now note that this owner's equity account is the account that was originally retained earnings, the account that we're gonna roll the income statement into, and it's gonna close out, like income is gonna close out to the equity account. Now, in traditional accounting, uh, the, the closing process would also close out investments, your personal investment into the business and draws, 
the money coming from the business to you that you took out of the business into equity periodically, say yearly. But QuickBooks doesn't do that automatically. So if you don't roll these over with an adjusting entry, not a big deal. They'll just be hanging there all the time. But just remember that these two accounts, if you don't close them out on a yearly basis, represent investment and draws over the lifetime of the business. So just something to kind of be aware of. All right, let's go back on over and let's do the other one, uh, which is gonna be on 228. This one's is gonna be bank fees. I'll just go bank fees, $20, 20 buckaroonies, $20. And we're gonna say it's the bank fees and service charge, just like last time. So there it is, save that. Now, if we had bank feeds turned on, that would be done automatically for us. So we're gonna go up top, checking account has changed. So if I run it for Feb, the month of Feb, then we scroll down we've got the checking account has now the expense of the 20 here they put it up there for some reason and the other side is now on the income statement and i have a statement about income here i would like to make a statement about the income and down here what did we record it as bank fees there it is 15 and 20 they upped the fees this month what is going on with my bank inflation what whatever whatever let's just keep reconciling i'm going to go back to the left open up the hand buggy back to our reconciliation process which is under the accounting and chart of the accounts close in the hand buggy not chart of accounts back oh uh, what in the world we're going to go into accounting and reconcile pull it together pull it together cash resume reconciling okay so the last two we need to check off is the five hundred dollars not that one it just happens to be the same amount be careful we want this one no they happened on 228 but there they are the 20 and the 500 Whew. all right be careful so those are the two that puts us in balance we're good to go. Notice that we could make a mistake. I could have hit the wrong one, the wrong 500 there. So you want to be careful. It's possible to do little errors like that. So it is what it is. So we're in balance now. If this is anything other than zero, you haven't done your job because you could figure it out exactly. And if there's a problem that's on the bank statement, that's not on your books, then we can just fix it and we can make it make, we can make it right. And then, uh, and then, so, and if it's not right, then you're, 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 you're only cheating yourself. You're only cheating yourself because like, like you could have multiple transactions that make it off by like a dollar. And that means that the other side of those transactions that are involved in the other flows are going to be messed up too. So the bottom line is we're in balance at this point in time. This mirrors what is on our bank statement at this point in time, in terms of the summary up top. This matches out now, so we're good to go. The ending balance ties out for the cleared balance. That cleared balance, however, does not match what's on the books. It's still different. There's still a difference. The bank reconciliation report will show that difference, which is represented by all the things that we didn't check off, which we're not totally concerned about yet because we can see if they if they cleared in March, we're, we're okay with them. They're legitimate transactions. They're just timing differences, helping us to reconcile, helping us by reconciling to verify all transactions through the checking account, which helps us to not only verify ending cash balance, but all the transactions that the flow, the blood flow of cash through the business is touching all the other cycles. Now we're not gonna hit the finish button yet,